And I'll spend a little time talking about point of purchase marketing and other practices. And it's uh, pretty coming pretty close to poinsettia season. And I've actually, I was at Sam's Club last night and saw some, probably some of the worst poinsettias I've ever seen. <laughs> but I can tell you right up front that they were probably some of the best poinsettias you ever see before they left the greenhouse, because I know who grew them. And um, uh, once they get into the box stores, it's, it's often they don't tell how the right people would take care of them. R right people take care of them. Doesn't, uh, doesn't or well, pay home depot we'll talk about that. Sorry. <laughs> You're jumping ahead. You're jumping ahead. Oh, they went. Okay. So uh, marketing, there's off different, ca different ways to market plants. And one of the most recent things is uh, the advent of the, point, the National Poinsettia Day. And December 12th the set aside as National Poinsettia Day. Other things that we're doing to market poinsettias is we now have the poinsettia bowl, um, some other things like that. Uh, it used to be called the uh, fiesta bowl. And actually, December 12th marks the date of when Joel Poinsett passed away. Um, and of course, the purpose of the day is to enjoy and popularize the plant in, in more ways. And so the idea of having a promotion is to give someone you love a poinsettia on National Poinsettia Day. But uh, what I really wanted to talk about is point of purchase materials. And we've all, we're all exposed to point of purchase materials uh, all the time, every day, whenever we go shopping. And what point of purchase or point of sales, you'll see it in the literature, is um, marketing campaigns that are used to improve uh, sales at the point where products are checked out. So a lot of point of sales items, point of purchase items, are used to help market plants. And uh, it's heavily used in our floriculture industry to um, link advertising material to increase sales of that particular product. And some people think of point of purchase or point of sales marketing campaigns as the silent salesman. And um, what the goal is is to portray a product image and without having a salesperson there hounding you to buy that, that product. And we've all gone to grocery stores or gr gone to stores where uh, we've had either had sales people following us around, encouraging us to buy something, or you can't find that salesperson. So one of the most common products, a point of purchase um, marketing tools that's used in Colorado in, in the bedding plant industry is the Hardy Boy logo. And I use this one because you're already all familiar with it if you've been in any garden centers. And Debbie Borden Miller, who is the sales manager, um, she's worked on this process in quite a ways. And this uh, point of purchase um, Hardy Boy brand name recognition is something that they promote on a widespread basis and it helps promote and sales of their product because it gives them name recognition. Um, they've chosen this color to catch the eye of the consumer and the Hardy Boy logo is to promote quality and help create a whole package. Um, they have uh, pots, tags, signs, banners, and all of these are coordinated to reflect that image, uh, to reinforce the company image in such a way that we can use it to help market and promote their plants. And what Debbie says is that they want to see that Hardy Boy continuous all through their marketing programs. You'll see it on, on t TV advertisements. You'll see it uh, on signage in the stores. You'll see signage on their trucks. You see signage on uh, banners in the garden centers and such as that. And um, they use the point of purchase materials because they uh, want the customers to always look for the Hardy Boy product. And this is effectively used in a lot of different ways. And hopefully, since the Hardy Boy line has been around for 40, 50 years, people have confidence that they're getting a good quality product. Some other marketing campaigns that uh, have been around um, is the Simply Beautiful campaign, and that's a ball horticulture campaign. And the, the idea is to use taglines that simple sells. 
And uh, some of the taglines that they've used include things like, have you got what she's looking for this spring? And this is a creation of Anna Ball, the CEO of, of um, Ball Horticulture. And what her intent is to send a guarding message that people, if they see the Simply Beautiful logo, that they're getting something that they can, they can trust. And for instance, the Simply Beautiful tag, um, it's um, very simple. And you can put your garden center names, you can purchase the banners, or you can download the banners and have them printed, put your garden center name to relate. Now the Simply Beautiful logo is actually a national campaign, and you'll see it in Gardening Magazine, Sunset, Southern Living, places like that, uh, so that you have some kind of a, uh, of a program. And what the Simply Beautiful program is doing is that they're only using with the Simply Beautiful logo, garden-tested, trial-proven seed and vegetative varieties from Ball Horticulture. Ball Horticulture is one of the primary supporters of our trial grounds here at CSU. And they have uh, trial ground, including their site in West Chicago, but they also support trials at Penn State and trials on the West Coast all over the country. So they're looking at trying to put together wide range of garden needs, sun, shade, height, spread, where to plant it, all on their tags. The Simply Beautiful know-how system is used and tested throughout the country. And it's heavily used um, on TV ads, the Weather Channel, Home and Garden TV, et cetera. Also with uh, print ads, magazine, and television. Now the Weather Channel has a pretty heavy impact on um, gardening industry uh, in that we're looking at when a Weather Channel ad runs in April during the gardening season, you're exposing your product line to eight, more than 80 million viewers. And the Weather Channel has the opportunity to regionalize certain parts of it. It's called Weather on the Eights. And eight, whenever it's at the eight um, unit, there's usually a three, two to three minute spurge of local production. Now, that doesn't happen if you're using satellite. It primarily happens on the, on the cable networks. If you're using a satellite, what you have to do is the satellite owner has to enter in their zip code, and it just brings up the local uh, weather. But the local cable companies can sell tags for the end of the commercials to have local, local growers. And these are such as uh, miniature billboards in over 8,000 markets. Home and Garden TV, um, Simply Beautiful uh, is one of the major, Ball Horticulture is one of the major uh, sponsors of a lot of the advertising on Simply Beautiful. Uh, promotes local gardening activities, uh, weekend gardening activities. And all of these things are places where we plant ads that with national promotions that can be translocated down into the garden centers. Um, that doesn't work. Flower Fields is another um, marketing campaign that is uh, an old campaign, but it doesn't exist currently. Um, Flower Fields is a marketing analysis alliance through several companies. The companies were Goldsmiths, Plants and Seeds, um, Fisher USA, and the Paul Ecke Ranch. Well, it doesn't exist today because Goldsmith and Fisher are now owned by Syngenta, and Paul Ecke was just purchased by a Dutch breeder earlier this fall. So the Flower Fields was a marketing campaign where they put the threes together to put together a program. Oh, and Yoder Brothers was involved too, but Yoder's is part of Goldsmith, part of Fisher now, Paul which is, Paul Ecke does the point set is, but they've just been sold. Yeah. So, so at the, when this campaign was put together, it was one third of the bedding plant market when we had these four companies together looking at 1,400 varieties, over 70 genus, genera. And what they were doing is putting together point of purchase materials, banners, marketing, um, pots, uh, looking at putting together um, con conceptual layouts for different plant materials, for instant color, the point of purchase materials, basket tags, um, buttons for the uh, uh, retail staff to wear um, and 
what they're trying to do is these are point of purchase materials that they would have seen in an advertisement in a magazine or a television show that they'll see in the in the in the uh, in the garden center and they can identify with it that they've seen it and, they re and it represents quality. Um, this is a cart banner for a shopping cart. You can also see banners put in different places in the garden center and typically what they'll do is they'll put the places that are part of a national ad campaign towards the back of the store where on a wall where it's high enough above the aisles and such where the customer can see that banner and they're drawn to the banner because it's a familiar logo. They may not remember where they saw it, but they'll remember the logo and they're drawn to that site and they have to pass through all this other merchandise to get there. For instance, for a good example is, um, where's the milk in the grocery store? It's in the cooler in the back, but you have to go across the entire grocery store to get to it. And the reason is, is so you can have to cross the entire store to get to it. So point of purchase materials includes uh, posters and banners where the local garden center can put their own banner in a space. Um, one of the th things that we're doing in the industry is doing color matching with color families. Um, one of the, uh, just like the paint industry is doing where they're blending colors and that way you don't have to think about this. You say, okay, well I need these colors to make a nice color splash in my container or hopefully not choosing an obnoxious combination. Uh, using um, people like Alan Smith. Um, Alan Smith is, I have yet to figure out what his draw is, but everybody likes to watch his programs. Yeah, I know. I'm going to make you watch him. I like to listen to him talk. But, uh, <laughs> this guy is awesome. <laughs> but it's, it's all the way from the banners, and so here's a familiar face that that the consuming public, whether you like him or not, you know, we, 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 a video. we will watch a video. It's okay, carry on. But <laughs> one of the things is, is we're making tags where we've got the color of the plant and shows it really well. And one of the things that you notice about, what's what do you notice is different about this tag? It's upside down. Is it upside down? Well, it's got a latch on it. It's got a lock on it. It fits into a, a customized container, and it's designed so you can pull it over and read it. So it's, it, this is, and these tags are one of the reasons why I still require you to take technical communication as a, as a floriculture student, because it's hard to put the, all the text on that tag that you need to in uh, for the consumers to want to be able to buy that plant. And of course, we have uh, bench signs and such as that. Why aren't the labels more picture-oriented? Why, are the labels, why aren't the labels more picture-oriented? Such as like uh, shade plant, amount of water, things like that. Yeah. Change it. Someone's got to pay me. So, um, the containers are designed in such a way so that we give some kind of uh, branding identification and, and containers are grown this way and such as that. And Proven Winners does it. Uh, all of the major marketing companies do this. Some examples of poinsettia point of purchase to increase point of purchase sales. Um, this is from the Eki uh, family where they're trying to get a little bit of a, of a different class of layouts in their materials. Uh, other t ways to market plants include things like um, uh, charity sales. Right now, the poinsettia industry probably makes more money through charity sales than it does in actually selling poinsettias because uh, charities, people are willing to pay $10, $12 for a, ch for a poinsettia if they buy it from a Boy Scout or a choir group or something like that. Whereas if they're, they're wanting to go, I mean, I've seen some marketing of poinsettias being sold for 99 cents for a six inch pot, it costs you five bucks to grow that plant. It's called lost leader marketing. So again, using um, some um, point of purchase materials, and most of the, a lot of the people, you can download these as marketing materials or you can buy them custom manufactured. And there's three or four different companies in the United States that, that actually design and uh, promote 
um, uh, horticultural literature. Fundraisers, um, one of the things that, that I like about fundraisers is that uh, the garden center can work with a, a, a charity group and they can sell coupons or something like this. And when the, uh, the client buys the coupon, they go to pick up their plant, they go to pick up one plant that they've already paid the charity for, maybe they'll buy two or three more, or they'll buy a wreath or a Christmas tree or something else that gets them across the threshold of the door. Sometimes the hardest thing to do is get somebody across the threshold of the door. And that's what fundraisers do. And it works really well with hanging baskets in the spring as well. 